Deceit 2 has recently become free to play, along with being added to current gen consoles like PlayStation 5 and Xbox, and it also includes cross platform experience. If you've never played Deceit 2, it is a 6 to 9 horror social deception game. As a player, you will be trying to figure out who is not being honest about what role they actually are. On the other hand, you may be trying to deceive the other players to hide your true identity. When starting a match, you will be presented with one of the three teams infected innocent or cursed as infected you may choose which terraform you would like to use if you have the dlc this also applies to the cursed team being able to choose between the mimic or the chemist if you have the dlc innocents do not have a choice of roles it is picked at random when you load into a match you will all spawn in a random location on the map voice chat is a huge part of this game so make sure to use it if you can when you come across other players you may use proximity chat to communicate with them to share information and potentially accuse someone in particular, maybe you witness something, etc. As infected, you will also have this option, but you also have an infected global voice chat, so you can communicate with your teammate across the map secretly. Tasks. This is the main objective of the innocent team, to finish all of them and escape from the ritual once enough tasks have been completed. Within the game, there are item shops called peddlers. These shops will provide you with items to help you survive or suss out the infected or help your case in killing the innocents. The first item you receive will be random and free, but once you have finished more tasks, more items will be available for you to pick and you may choose whichever fix like your, your playstyle. Also, it's worth mentioning that free random items are blocked in each game, so it kind of changes up the, the rhythm of uh, how people are playing it. Let's talk infected. You will notice that you can see other players through the map when you're an infected. This allows you to safely determine when you should activate blood altars without being caught by innocent players. These blood altars will bring forth the in-between quicker, which is when the infected become much stronger. You can find them all around the map, they will always be in the same area. When activating some of these altars, you may see icons above them. These are your terror mutations, which unlock many one-use abilities, which range from silencing everyone, teleporting everyone to a random location, or shutting down the power, and much more. These are also shared between you and your teammates, so make sure that you coordinate with them before using these mutations just to ensure that they have the most impact. When it comes to activating blood altars, sometimes an infected player may get caught coming from one of them. In this situation, the innocents will need to cast their vote on who they believe it is. This can either be done remotely using your Q keybind, your Q key or your your vote keybind or whatever it is on control I, I have no idea or you can just interact with the down player from you know whether or not they've been downed by a pistol or melee or even your fists you can interact with someone that's currently downed and you can cast a vote the in-between after enough time has passed the in-between will begin this is a phase of the game that is dark eerie and much more dangerous players will be anonymous for the most part you won't be able to vote or hurt anyone and this is the time that the infected will strike once transforming into their terraform using their t key or rollability keybind again no idea what it is on controller they are able to hunt you down and take you out of the game. Sanity. Every player has a sanity meter which is independent of their health. The sanity meter is the little brain icon on your HUD. Many different things can drain the sanity, like simply being in the in-between. However, there are things that do increase the reduction of your sanity, like the eyes on the walls, the wolves howling at you, or lastly, the terror grabbing you. Be careful not to let your sanity get too low as below around 50%, one grab from a terror will kill you. At zero sanity, you won't even be able to run anymore so outrunning a terror well you're not gonna outwalk it to regain your sanity you have a few options you can complete tasks which regain around 10 sanity you can get an item like the sanity syringe to fully regain your sanity however they can only be used once per game so i'd really kind of save that till like last resort lastly surviving until the reality phase kicks in again which you will then start to regain your sanity passively at this point, when you get back to reality, you will also be doing tasks with ease as well, so you should be fine. Surviving the in-between is not easy, however, you do have a lot of options at your disposal. This includes wall cracks, vaults, portals, and obviously items. You will be able to find many cracks in the walls to fit through, places to vault over, and portals which take you to a different part of the map. However, when none of these options are close to you, it can make things pretty hard. Make sure that you're stacked up on items that produce light, like a camera, flashlight, as terrors and other creatures in the in-between are easily stunned by these. It is still important to remember that these are only measures to slow them down and not to completely put them out of the game it's not going to happen as there's no way for you to directly fight back against the terrorists the only way of survival 
get away. As the only way to end the in-between is by someone either being caught and sacrificed or by the time running out. Currently, there are two different terrors. There is the experiment and then there is the werewolf. Both have unique abilities and play very differently. Firstly, you have the experiment which is the base terror that you will have without needing to purchase any DLC. But that does not mean it isn't still very strong. The experiment has three abilities, chokehold, rage, and light block. The chokehold is a simple grab, a human to drain their sanity heavily. If you catch a human twice, they will die the second time. Unless their sanity is already too low, they will die in one grab. The rage will make the experiment charge and scream, with it draining the sanity of anyone it sees. Light block will prevent being stunned from flashes and light sources at the cost of reduced vision and heavily reduced movement speed. The experiment also has a passive ability, being the rift eyes, which drain the sanity when gazing on a human along with revealing their location to terrors. The werewolf also has three abilities, leap, howl and sprint. The leap is a simple leap that jumps forward and will grab anyone in its range. The howl will disorientate and drain the sanity of anyone who hears it and it will also make the AI wolves that roam the map howl, showing the aura of players near them. Lastly, the sprint is just that. It does take a bit of time for it to ramp up to max speed, but when it does get to max speed, it is really quick. Something to note when sprinting, the werewolf will not see any of the human auras, so make sure to stop at time to time to see where people are. The werewolf's passive is the AI wolves that roam the map and bark at players, which drain their sanity and reveal their location like the eyes the wolves can be stunned from light as terrors you may destroy wooden or weakened walls in order to give you a quicker route around the map these typically are close to wall cracks to catch up with players terrors can also break these wall cracks to prevent players from using them until they are fixed with the repair hammer which you can get from the peddler it's also worth mentioning that the experiment is a brute type terror and will break walls and cracks faster than the werewolf however the werewolf can vault whereas the experiment cannot maps themselves are not only filled with tasks but also filled with points of interest which may be used unique to that particular map. On the Asylum map, there are blackboards which may be used if you are muzzled or if you don't have a microphone to communicate. However, these can only be used in custom lobbies at the moment. There are also tannoids, which allow you to project your voice across the entire map. If you ever need someone to hear something, you have an elevator, which requires power to be fixed from below, uh, which will then allow you to route between floor levels in a different way. It's also worth mentioning that the elevator would not function during the in-between. There's also the most important point of interest, the inspection machine. This becomes available near the beginning of the game. This will allow one person to scan whoever sits in the chair in the inspection room. Only the person scanning can see the result of the scanned player sitting in the chair. This is a one use ability, so don't just chuck it away. It's it's quite valuable. The Project Worgen map also has a few things like this. It also has tannoids across the map, but something different is that there are many doors that will stay closed unless the correct code has been placed into the keypad, which can be found on the screens around the map. At this point, the doors will just open when you approach them. The inspection room on this map is also different. There's these tube-like things that they're called vats. These vats will show whether two players are on the same team or not. This means that it can produce a green result even if there are two infected. It makes things a lot more interesting but also a lot harder. Side note would be that someone that claims to have a human role like Warden, Guardian, or Inquisitor, if they can prove it, allow them to get into the tube and then have someone elected to go into the tube with them if they are infected or not. Other than that, another alternative would be having a third person to dictate who goes into the vats. Anyone that self-volunteers can be considered quite sus, so I would, uh, I would, I would look into that. Something that is present on both maps is the escape doors. This is where the innocents will go to escape once enough tasks have been completed. The escape key will become available to them. This key can be picked up from any of the peddlers, and each key corresponds to a specific door, which is the one that's furthest away from that particular peddler. Once a key has been picked up, this will start the final sequence. Innocents have a countdown timer where they need to escape in that time or everyone will die. The key holder cannot use any of their other abilities or use portals to traverse. So coordinate with your fellow players to help them bring the key to the exit. If this is not possible and you're about to die, you may relinquish the key and send it back to a peddler for another player to pick up. As for the terrorists, grabbing any player in this phase will kill them quickly. If you kill the key holder, the key will be returned to the peddler. Then we have Cursed. At the moment, the curse is an independent solo role, somewhat neutral. These roles have different win conditions. The base role that you will have without buying anything is the Mimic. This one is quite simple. After a couple people die, you may select a banished player and take their role, turning you into either an innocent, potentially with a human role, or infected. The way that it essentially works is if you were to pick a banished player that turned out to be a human, you would then be siding with the humans and working on their behalf to win the game. However, if you picked a banished player that was a terror, you would then start to side with the terror team. I guess it allows for the losing team to have a little bit of help. However, if you don't end up picking 
any of the banished players. Once the key is obtained, you will be banished yourself. Just keep that in mind. The second curse role at the moment is the chemist. This one is much more of a killing evil role, more so than the mimic. The chemist will be able to choose a player and poison them, blocking their abilities for a short time. Once everyone in the game is poisoned, everyone will start to drain life quickly and die if the chemist is not banished. You can narrow down who might be the chemist by seeing who's not poisoned. Once poisoned, you can see others that have also been inflicted with poison and the chemist can't poison themselves, so it kind of narrows it down. In the early game, the chemist does not have much impact, but becomes very deadly when it comes to the last few people that are alive. Innocents also have roles of their own. In a full lobby of nine players, there will be two terrors, one cursed, and six humans. Two of those humans will have roles. These roles include the warden, the guardian, and the inquisitor. The guardian is able to protect one person, not including themselves, before each night. If the protected player is caught by a terror, they will be immune to death. They essentially have a get out of jail free card. Players may only be protected once per game. On the other hand, the warden Warden is able to mark one player per game, a marked player will be banished immediately once down regardless of votes. If the player marked and killed is innocent, the Warden will die as well. If the player marked and killed is a terror or cursed, they will live. For the marked player, they just have to make sure they are not downed until the Warden is dead, as the mark only goes away when they do. Lastly, the Inquisitor, which is by far the weakest at this point in time, at least in my opinion. This role is an information role, which shows recent footsteps when using their ability, along with seeing how long ago an altar was used. The footsteps last Last around 10 seconds and you can essentially follow from where a blood altar was active to to follow those footsteps to see who it is that activated it at the moment it's not that strong but according to the deceit 2 twitter page they are releasing enhancements for the inquisitor and the chemist in the next patch i believe so hopefully we can see either a rework or just a massive buff to it because it's it's really not that good at the moment if you enjoyed this video please leave a like and subscribe it would help a lot i'm trying to reach 200 subscribers good luck on the in-between